Hello and welcome to ACE Online and welcome to uh, Daily Current Affairs Initiative. So we will see uh, current affairs of uh, yesterday's and today. So yesterday was, uh, you know, public holiday. So we will also take current affairs which are covered uh, yesterday in the today session. So it will be a little longer. So whenever there is no session because of Sunday, Sunday or holidays, the next day we will be covering the current affairs which were not covered in that particular day, right? So as yesterday is a holiday, we have taken the current affairs which are relevant for our exam from yesterday and today as well, right? So these are the uh, articles that we are going to cover today. Before this, I want to tell you again, this uh, uh, current affairs initiative is not an analysis like there is a lot of channels or a lot of sessions which are analyzing a particular issue in a lengthy way. This is not the case. This is strictly exam oriented, which uh, the aim is to make you understand the issue in brief. And then what are all the facts that are relevant for our exam will be covered through this issue surrounding it. Okay. So the, the session is I mean, exactly suited for exams. It is not an issue in general to discuss, uh, you know, to get you more analysis over it. It is just a exam oriented sessions. Okay, so these are the sessions that we are going to cover, uh, articles that we are going to cover. First one is Gyanwabi mask issue, right? So it was there because of Archaeological Survey of India submitted the report. We will see what is the background and what are all the relevant things that for our exam. It, it comes part of Art and Ar Architecture of India or Culture. Then Padma Awards. So recently uh, government has announced Padma Awards to certain individuals. We will see what is the background and what are all the things that are important for our exam. Then smart lander for invest, uh, investing moon mission. So this is a Japan uh, mission. Japan recently it has soft landed the uh, satellite on the moon, right? So all India survey on higher education released by Ministry of Education. This also comes under the governance. Jivan Raksha Padak series of awards. So again comes under the governance part given by the government. P PM SSV scheme, Pradhan Mantri SSV scheme. Then melanistic tiger species. Uh, because of Odisha starting the world's first safari for these pieces. Gallantry Award, so again government has announced uh, on the occasion of Republic Day. Then Sapinda Marriage, so this is again comes under the social issues part, a different article from uh, what we have seen uh, till now. So this is part of social issues or Indian society, a type of marriage, we will see what is it and what are all the relevant things for our exam. Finally, we will see the practice questions. So if you have any doubts, or if you could not able to understand anything, you can uh, just, uh, you know, ask the doubt here. So I'll clear it. Good evening. Yeah, happy Republic Day related and thanks a lot. So let's start the session. First one, Gyan Vapi mask. So the context is this. We have already discussed Archaeological Survey of India, which is an organization under government of India, has submitted the report related to the Gyan Vapi mask as asked by the Supreme Court. We will see the timeline also. We will understand why the report was prepared and what is the mandate of Supreme Court. Then we will see what is actually the, uh, you know, readings of the report. What are the observations of the report, right? First understand the background. What is the Gyan Vapi mask issue? Gyan Vapi is a mask. Uh, I mean, the Gyan Vapi mask is located in Varnasi, Uttar Pradesh, right? So it is located in Uttar Pradesh that again becomes important. So going back to the 1991, so almost uh, when the uh, same like, you know, Ayodhya issue has happened uh, just before the Ayodhya issue. In 1991, the local priests uh, in the Varanasi, they have filed a petition in the Supreme Court requesting a space or permission to worship the, uh, the Hindu deities in the same mass complex. So the priest has requested court that we want certain space for the worship within the mosque. Okay. So they have claimed that originally it was part of Kashi Vishwanath temple. So Kashi Vishwanath temple was older one and it was demolished and you know, uh, a mosque was constructed there by Aurangajeb Mughal emperor, right? In the same space, they are saying that this Gyan uh, Vapi mosque was actually in early temple, it was destructed and it was part of Kashi Vishwanath temple and they have constructed the mask. That's what they claimed to the Supreme Court when they have submitted the petition. After that, Supreme Court has dismissed the petition saying that it is not valid. There is no proper proof. You cannot claim like that. So it has dismissed in 1998 Supreme Court, whatever the priest has filed. After that, it was resurfed during Ayodhya issue when the Supreme Court was considering the Ayodhya issue in 2019. This issue has raised again 
after almost 20 years after all 20, I mean almost 20 years after again they have come up with the issue of Gyanwabi mask uh, so in the response one of the lawyers in India has filed a petition again in Supreme Court oh sorry in lower court so not in the Supreme Court Supreme Court has quashed the petition or the uh, urge in 1998 so the local lawyer has submitted the petition in local court in Uttar Pradesh seeking archaeological survey of uh, India's uh, study so he has filed a petition that Supreme Court has already quashed that there is no proof okay let us give it to the archaeological survey and collect the proofs whether really there was a temple or not okay so he has filed the petition however masks uh, management so the Sunni Central Walk of Board has opposed the reading of the or the study of that particular site through the archaeological survey of India so mask authority has not accepted to give permission for archaeological survey to come into the mask and collect the data so they have quashed so by considering all these things after seeing all these things supreme court in 2021 because one party want to make the survey uh, from archaeological survey of india i mean through the archaeological survey of india and another another party they don't want to give permission to study there so in 2021 supreme court eventually finally ag agreed to uh, see the this particular issue through places of worship act we have already discussed places of worship act in previous sessions that this act was brought by government in uh, during ayodhya issue that whatever the situation that are present at 1947 those sites should not be disturbed okay so they have uh, you know accepted this petition they have uh, the supreme court has uh, considered this that we will study this particular mask issue under the places of worship act and later immediately after that the Supreme Court has directed Archaeological Survey of India. It has crashed in 1998, but later in 2021, again, they have accepted and asked Archaeological Survey of India to collect the information between 8 a.m. to 12, uh, 12 a.m., right? So 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. actually this is. So that means in the morning, in the early morning, when there is no disturbances for the prayers in the mask, you can go and collect the data and submit the report to us, final report. So finally in 2021 Supreme Court has given the permission right so this is the timeline before knowing the observations what see you understood the context right Supreme Court has asked the archaeological survey of India to collect the information regarding the mask whether there is a temple or not so we will see what observation archaeological survey of India made but before that we will also need to see what is archaeological survey of India so questions will be coming from this so that's what I was telling you that this is exclusively exam point of view whatever the issues that are whatever the facts that are required for our exam will be you know discussing here so we will see archaeological survey of India related facts then we will go for what are all the observation archaeological survey of India has made from Gyanwapi mask this archaeological Sunday, uh, survey of India was created in way back 1861 so immediately after 1857 revolt so that's uh, this is the trick that you need to remember the facts whenever you are reading the fact try to compare with the timeline surrounding it so 1857 we have 1857 revolt the great Indian revolt so it was established in 1861 by Alexander Cunningham a British army engineer with a particular interest in Indian archaeology so this name is also very important for our exam Alexander Cunningham has established this and now the present situation is this it is affiliated under the Ministry of Culture this is again important so which ministry is administering the archaeological survey of India so it is administered by Ministry of Culture that is important and what is the objective why they have put an organization of archaeological survey of India the responsibility for archaeological research and conservation so India is a very a old uh, you know country which have in numerous history as well as culture so to protect those things there is a one body responsible for all this archaeological research and conservation of our Indian culture so that is the objective and all the monuments like Taj Mahal whatever the important monuments are there all are kept under the archaeological survey of India it will provide security all the things that is required so that is the objective of archaeological survey of India and later government has passed after independence in 1958 again important ancient monuments and archaeological survey oh sorry archaeological sites and remains act government has passed before this archaeological survey of India is just an executive body an organization but now it was given with backing from the law statutory law so 
It is a statutory body following independence. This AMR Act established ASAI, Archaeological Survey of India, as a statutory entity. So, this is the present status of Archaeological Survey of India. Okay. So, these are all facts relevant for our exam. Now, we will see what observation this ASI, Archaeological Survey of India, has made in Gyan Wapit site uh, in the sub, to the submission to the Supreme Court. So, it says that the pre existing structure was probably destroyed in 17th century. So, 17th means from 1601. So, it, the first observation that is relevant for our exam is this there was a pre existing structure and it was destroyed in the 17th century during the reign of. Aurangzeb. So that is the first observation because the observation was made because there were some instructions found within the mask site that there are Devangiri, Grantha, Telugu and Kannada scripts existing there. That means what? Before 17th century there were certain culture, which, uh, cultural elements that are relevant from Indian history. So there is some pre-existing structure with this inscription also found there. Also Parts of pre-existing temple were reused for the expansion of the mosque. So whatever the temple destructed by those uh, time, so those structures has used to expand the mosque in that particular site. The central chamber of the mosque already was earlier part of existing structure. So the central chamber was constructed, uh, the central chamber of the mosque was constructed from the structures that was destructed before this. Pillars. Pillars of the pre-existing temple were used as a cellars. Cellars are the places where you can stay or vehicles can be parked. So those pillars were used to build the cellars. So what it is saying? So there was a pre-existing structure. Now we will see what court has said. We have to wait. Uh, we have to wait what the Supreme Court will pronounce. But this is the present situation. The report has published by the Archaeological Survey of India. Right. So this is about can uh, about the Gyan Wapi mask any doubts so some people have put sir uh, you share the PDF daily okay I will tell to the uh, team uh, I will give the PDF to the team and uh, I will tell to link the PDF at the uh, you know in the video itself at the end of the video itself uh, will be sharing the link okay so don't worry right I hope you understood all the facts related to the Gyan Wapi mask the background right and what is archaeological survey of India and what observation it has made right so these are all relevant for our exam let's move to the next article that is Padma awards this is very important even in 2021 there was a UPSC prelims question on Padma uh, awards so we'll see uh, what are all the things that is relevant for our exam first the context is this a total of 132 Padma awards have been announced so this year government has announced total 132 Padma awards out of which five are Padma Vibhushan the highest one among Padma awards and the 17th Padma Bhushan Padma Bhushan awards are 17 the second uh, big, bigger one and finally the Padma Sri a little a smaller one with 110 so total 132 Padma awards has been announced we will see, we will tell you how to remember the uh, names. You cannot remember all 132 and that is not required for our exam also. I will tell you how to observe them for our exam point of view. Right? Before seeing the winners, we will see what is actually the Padma Awards. That's how the questions can be framed. These Padma Awards are civilian honors. That means what? It is given to non-military, non-war based. So it is for any civilians, the normal citizens. Right? Announced annually on the eve of Republic Day. So every year annually that you need to observe. So every year they are uh, they are announced in the Republic Day evening before just before Republic Day evening. And there are three categories. So everyone, everyone might be aware about it. But I am just telling you once again. So there are three things Padma Vibhushan for exceptional and distinguished service. Exceptional is a key word here. That means they have contributed innumerably something very important. Okay. Second one is Padma Bhushan. Here exception word is gone. But distinguished service was added along with higher order. So distinguish uh, service with the little bit higher order. And in Padma Sri only distinguished service there is no higher order word. So that's how they have arranged in a hierarchical manner. Right. So these are the three awards given under Padma awards. And why they are giving it? What is the objective? 
the award seeks to recognize achievements in all field all field of activities across india whatever there is public service art science you don't need to worry about remembering those things there are n number of activities so government want to encourage right in the end it if someone is recognizing you as a first rank that means what they are encouraging you to perform well so that is the objective of this padma awards and how the nomination is been done so who can be given with the awards who can be nominated and how selection can be happened so this is also very important for our exam so they are conferred on the recommendations made by padma award committee so finally who selects this uh, who you know shortlist and select this padma awards there is a padma awards committee headed by cabinet secretary we will discuss it it is constituted by prime minister every year very very important who constitutes padma awards committee very important prime minister or ministry of culture or ministry of home affairs don't uh, confuse and make a wrong wrong answer there so it is nominated by or constituted by prime minister the nomination process is open to public even you can nominate i can nominate just in the website so whatever the nominations they will see it and they will shortlist but anyone can nominate so this is also important thing there is no nomination from government or not only from government but from anyone any public any person can nominate it not final selection but only nomination can be done in the website and even self nomination can be done i myself can nominate that i am eligible for padma award please consider these are the conditions so that also i can submit in the government website finally padma awards committee headed by cabinet secretary again this is important who heads padma awards committee cabinet secretary so cabinet secretary is the highest uh, ias officer administrative officer in the central government so he takes care of all the departments so all the ias officers under each of the departments will finally report their work to the cabinet secretary and he takes care of day to day administration through all the ministries at one point right so he heads this or he or she heads this padma awards committee and which includes home secretary secretary of uh, you know president and four other eminent personalities who have experience so that is not very much important for our exam and the recommendations of committee are submitted to the prime minister and the president of india so finally after nomination put it in the website so this padma awards committee is constituted by the prime minister they will consider all the names and finally shortlist some names and then submit it to the president of india and prime minister so finally government can this uh, uh, i mean this committee will give lot of names but within that who gives the final selection it is prime minister and uh, on the government finally prime minister headed by uh, sorry government headed by the prime minister they also submit to the president of india finally government will announce in a notification right so this is the process of selection of uh, padma awards then we need to know about the history of padma awards as well so when it was first constituted who were who were the first winners so something like that the question statements can be framed as well so this there are two awards the higher award was bharat ratna we have already discussed in the previous sessions bharat ratna as well as padma vibhushan the highest padma award they were constituted in 1954 this is very important as highest indian honor first it was constituted in 1954 this padma vibhushan and three other classes pehla varg and dusra varg that means second and teesra varg so when it was constituted early it was given within padma vibhushan award there were three categories first category second category and third category but government feel that this is not the way to categorize 1 2 3 and ranks so they have renamed in 1955 as padma vibhushan padma bhushan and padma shri okay so finally in 1955 this three existing three categories has been established after dismantling this pradma dusra all these things they have dismantled right so this is the history and the first ever padma vibhushan award was given in 1954 to satyendranath bose and the nandalal bose so satyendranath bose he is a physicist right so he was given the first award along with the uh, nandalal bose who is a a literary or the uh, you know painter okay so the first ever non indian padma vibhushan so apart from indians this award can also be given to the foreigners and the first foreign award was king jigme dorji wangchuk of bhutanese so bhutanese king wangchuk was the first foreign awardee in 1954 itself okay whenever they have 
constituted the same year the foreigner has got this padma awards which were instituted in 1954 announced every year on the occasion of republic day we have seen this but there were certain disruptions in 1978 1979 where the emergency year just passed so that years government was busy and they were not able to give and also from 1993 to 1997 because we are facing the economical crisis those those years right so we we were facing economical crisis that time after 1991 right lpg reforms so that years there was exemption there were no awards given in those years right and what the padma awards entitled so what what will get if you are you know finally selected to the padma awards what an individual will get so they will get it is presented by president of india this is also important who present this president of india and they will get certificate right as well as medal there is no monetary cash award there is no monetary award like bharat ratna same way bharat ratna does not have any monetary award they will get just certificate and a medal certificate is for appreciation and medal is to remember that they got this these are the entitles entitlements given the awards are however not conferment of title so in uh, you know during british time there were certain prince maha raja di raja so or raja di raja raja something like that there were titles so it was abolished by our constitution under article 181 so constitution said that nobody can give, uh, take the titles from anywhere so this is not to give a title rather to give only the recognition so that is also important so they should not use it as a suffixes and all in the meeting something like that they are just for recognition that's all the total number of award is to be given in a year in a single year they can only give 120 but so this year they gave 132 because excluding posthumous awards and nris so whatever the posthumous that means after death are awards given along with the foreigners they are not considered as part of this 120 so that's why 132 it was more than 120 but general 120 excluding posthumous and nris government can give government servants are barred to take this so because they are working in the government they cannot be given except in two cases that is doctors and scientists so doctors and scientists who are working for the government are eligible apart from that no other government employees are eligible eligible for taking this award okay right so that is about the awards history all these things are very important now there there is a exhaustive list 132 names you no need to worry so we'll see how to remember or what to remember padma vibhushan is the highest padma award so generally it is not more in number like 5 6 at max so you need to remember all the names especially if you are any person from this particular state you need to remember this year we got for uh, vijayanti bali uh vijayanti mala bali from art tamil nadu so if you are a person from tamil nadu try to remember this and konidala chiranjeevi the uh, cine actor from andhra pradesh so he also got this and our former vice president venkai naidu has got again from andhra pradesh shri brindeshwar patak posthumous that means after his death he is from bihar so that is also important padma subramanian from art and uh, art tamil nadu again right so these five names has to be remembered because this is a small list try to you can revise it two three times and you can easily remember so these are all from uh, padma vibhushan and in padma bhushan we got 17 how will you remember you no need to remember you can remember from any specialization so there is one foreigner only one foreigner who got this uh, award in the list she yong liu so from trade and industry this you need to remember who got this award of from foreigner category and in other names you can just remember your own state so if you are from kerala you can remember this name you if you are from maharashtra you need to remember the two names right if you are from ladakh or if you are from kerala gujarat so only those names which are from your state even if you are attending interview in upsc they will ask you which uh, who from your state got padma award so there may be a question or even in if you are writing the second level of exams like group 2 group 3 or some lower level exams so your person from your state if you are writing state psc exams they may ask in the exam as well so this you need to remember the names as well as this from your own state other names you can exclude same thing 
So you can remember if you are from any of these states, you can try to remember, right? So this, this is how you need to remember for the exam. So any doubts from this? Okay. So there is no doubt. I hope it is clear about Padma Awards and all the awardees uh, that is relevant for our exam. Next one, smart lander for investigating moon. Slim mission. So in the exams, they may also ask the shortcut. Slim mission. So smart lander for investigating moon. The context is this. So you might you all know that Chandrayaan 3 was softly landed. Soft landing means without any crash on the moon. Without just crashing, softly as a planned way, it is to land on the moon. So India has become the fourth country after uh, America, Russia and China. Uh, India has become the fourth country to soft land the satellite on the moon. Now Japan has become fifth country of India after India to soft softly land a spacecraft on the moon. Okay, so our mission is Chandrayaan 3 and their mission is slim mission, smart lander for investi uh, investigating moon. Okay, so we'll see some details which is relevant for our exam. You no need to go that detail because the mission is not from India. If the mission is from India, of course you need to go for a little bit detail. Here, as the mission is related to the Japan, we'll tell you there are three, four facts which are relevant. Only those things you can remember that will be sufficient. Right, so it is a lightweight sp spacecraft that is satellite when we compare to the Chandrayaan 3. Chandrayaan 3 weight was around 4000 kgs, 3900, but this is approximately only 600, 650 kgs in total. So this is a light spacecraft, right? It has chosen a site near Shioli crater. Crater means a depression, a depression on the land, okay? So crater means a depression. So there is a depression on moon, whoever has discovered can name it. So here, Shioli crater was selected on the moon to launch this satellite. That is also important for our exam. Okay. So if you observe any other things, so the launch vehicle is H2A, the rocket where we use GSLV. So here they have used H2A. And what is the mission? Objective to investigate the moon's formation by examining, uh, examining the exposed pieces in lo uh, lunar mantle. So they just want to explore the moon surface on the interior. We will see little bit detail. Okay. So these are the things that you need to remember. And what is the mission goals? We have mission goals for Chandrayaan 3. Same way, this particular satellite also has certain objectives. First one is precision landing without crash. Exactly whatever the point they have selected. On the same point, they, they aimed at launching this satellite. So that is the first one with the minimal deviation that is the first objective second is they have also payload payload means i have already told in previous sessions it is any uh, you know what you call uh, machines or whatever the articles they use to investigate the objects they have put it on the spacecraft all those things are considered as a payloads so they have also launched to put a rovers rover means you might have seen after chandrayaan 3 launch there was a Vikram lander landed and from that a small vehicle rover was put it on the land and it moved and collect all the data. Similarly, Japan has launched two rovers, LE1 and LE, LEV2. There are two uh, rovers to collect the data, to study the lunar surface. So by collecting all the data, temperatures, all these things, they have uh, also launched uh, two rovers, right? So these are the mission goals. Very simple. No need to worry too much. Right? So that is about the, uh, I mean, smart lander for investigation on moon. Right? Next one. All India survey on higher education 2021 and 22. So, let's see. Any doubts before this? Okay. No doubts. We'll go ahead with the survey readings. Uh, you don't need to worry about remembering all the data. We'll tell you what are all the things that to be remembered. So recently, the context is this. Uh, yesterday, Ministry of Education has launched higher education. Survey on higher education. That means after graduation. After graduation, whatever you do, post-graduations and PhD, all those comes under the uh, uh, higher education. So there was a data which is relevant for our exam. Only few things so that we will discuss. This survey was conducting since 2011. So this is not the first edition. The first edition came in 2011. 
covering all higher educational institutions in the country which were registered with this survey. Right? So whatever the education, the higher education institutions that have registered with the AISH under the Ministry of Education, they have collected the data since 2011. We will see some uh, which are relevant for our exam from the survey. So this year survey 2020-21, uh, sorry 21-22, we will see the important data. See whenever you are seeing the data, it is not very important to remember all the facts and figures. That's not the way to prepare the prepare for the competitive exam. You need to understand the trends, whether it increased, whether it is decreased. If the data is very important, like what is the GDP, GDP or something, budget, those figures are important, facts are important. But in general, if you are given with lot of data, observe the trends. That is sufficient for our exam. Okay. So total enrollment in higher education has increased nearly to 4.33 crores. That means what? Whoever the students are eligible, for example, in India, there are uh, 5 crore people who can uh, who has completed graduation and ready to take higher education. Out of those 5 crores, how many people are taking the enrollment? That is called as enrollment ratio. The number of people who are enrolling to the divided by the total number of students who are ready to take the admission and are eligible. So that is called as enrollment ratio. And here, the total enrollment in numbers is 4.33 crore. So out of 140 crores of Indian population, approximately 4.33 crore people are have enrolled for higher education, which is a good number that we are uh, increasing. There has been an increase in around 91 lakhs in the enrollment when we compare to the 2014-15. So when we compare with the 2014-15, approximately 10 years before, it was only 3.42 crores. Now it was increased by 91 lakhs, so 4.33 crore. So 91 lakhs has improved in the last 10 uh, you know, years of Indian higher education. The total student enrollment in Northeast state. See, Northeast states is again important because they are underdeveloped when we compare to the mainland of India, like Mizoram, Assam, Arunachal Pradesh. So that's why government is trying to encourage and collect the data to motivate them to involve more. So there was a data related to the enrollment in northeast state it, it is around 12.02 lakhs so from exclusive northeast we have uh, 12 lakhs approximately when we compare to the 9.36 lakh in 2014-15 so there was an increase of approximately 3 lakhs gender parity index so that means what is the ratio between women and men so how much women are, women are joining per the total women so it was 1.01 very very important because women enrollment is much higher than not much higher I would say higher than men which is a very good thing because of patriarchal society in India generally the women participation in education and employment is low but here in higher education women enrollment is much higher than I mean higher than men so which is a very good number right so these are the observations from uh, a few more are there among the disciplines, so we have number of disciplines in higher education, right? Arts, engineering and all. So arts forms the highest. This is very, very important. Which stream is having the highest enrollment for higher education? They may ask in the exam. So it is arts followed by science. So two you can remember that will be sufficient. Arts has the highest enrollment followed by the science. And then we have commerce and engineering. So that is the second or third and fourth. Among the streams at post-graduation level in age, maximum students are enrolled in social sciences. So if you are considering the disciplines, within arts we have social science, political science, history, there are many arts and science as well. If you are dividing it into multiple streams, social science has the highest followed by science. Right? So social sciences is having the highest in terms of streams and government universities constitute among 58.6% of total universities. That means they are dominating more than private. So this comes in the statement based. In India, there are more government uh, universities with regard to higher education when we compare to the private. Private is only 26.3. There may be in collaboration, public, private, something, trust. So there are other constituents. But here, dominated by government, very important. The total universities uh, in the, in, I mean, in India, were registered 1168 colleges are 45,000 so universities are only 1168 
So this all the data that you can remember. So we have discussed the most important thing. If you see the actual report, it is much in a bigger data. No need to worry about it. Just remember those things that we have discussed here. And finally, availability of different infrastructure facility in universities. So in higher education universities, almost all the universities has libraries, 99%. So there is 1% universities which does not even have libraries. And laboratories are only present in 88%. So rest of the 12% universities does not have laboratories. Computer centers, so 7% don't have computer centers, so 93% having it. Skill development center is still lagging. Only 71% we have. Uh, among the universities and playground is only 91% so we are not giving importance to physical so 99% of uh, education institutions still does not have playground which is very basic thing right so these are the data that you can remember from the report any doubts in this fine we'll move ahead to the next article Jeevan Raksha Padak uh, series of awards so there were new awards. The context is this. President of India has approved the conferment of Jeevan Raksha Padak series for 21 persons. So what is this award and all? We will see. Don't worry. Just understand the context that President has awarded Jeevan Raksha. Jeevan Raksha means what? Saving life. Simple. The name itself is giving some clue. So persons who has saved certain lives of the people they will be awarded so that is the objective anyway we will discuss in detail here the context is very simple that president has awarded 31 persons with the jeevan raksha padak awards right and what are the jeevan raksha padak awards we will see this the awards are given to honor any of the person who has saved life of others right so they it is a much greatest thing in, in the whole uh, you know life if you are saving one life also that is much valuable thing so people who are involved in saving the lives will be given either uh, posthumously or when alive right so some people will be sacrificed their life to save some other uh, persons so they were also being awarded as a under post uh, post uh, uh, posthumously category so here the awards are given to the persons who saves the life and that there are total three categories like padma awards same way, Sarvottam Jeevan Raksha, this is the highest award in saving the life. So, the same way hierarchically they are arranged. Uttam Jeevan Raksha Padak and Jeevan Raksha Padak. So, there are three categories, Sarvottam, Uttam and Jeevan Raksha Awards. Total three category awards. And person of all walks of life are eligible for this award. There is no restriction. So, all the people from any field are eligible. Whoever has saved this and they can also give posthumously, right? We, as we have already discussed, the decoration of award is presented to the awardees. So finally, it will be given to the awardees, of course, whoever won. Here, they will get medal, certificate along with the monetary allowance. This is important. They are also getting monetary allowance for saving the life, but there is no fixed monetary amount. It can be varied based on the government uh, wish. So medal, certificate as well as the monetary allowance is given to these people. So this year, there are uh, total 31 people. We no need to remember all. These three are given with the highest award. Sarvottam is the highest uh, award under the categories. So here, Master Anthony, Vanmavia, and then Melody, uh, Lalrem Bruhati, so, and then Sri Suraj R. So these are the three people who got the awards from the highest category. So this you can remember that will be sufficient. Right? Any doubts? Okay, we'll move ahead. Next is PM SSV scheme. So the context is simple. Ministry of Social Justice. So the scheme comes under the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment Ministry. They have awarded or provided with certain funds for this scheme. So we'll see what is the scheme and all. Just know the context that government has provided certain funds towards this particular scheme. Okay, right. So about the scheme. This is a scholarship scheme like to encourage the people to study more. That is the objective. So here there are certain categories of people who are awarded or who are given with scholarship. It is not for all the individuals. Those students should fall either under OBC category or economically backward category or denotified tribes, nomadic tribes. So denotified nomadic tribes means earlier uh, 
government or i mean during british time there were there used to be tribes which are uh, or, i mean moving from one place to other place so they are not very developed in terms of economical or social indices so here government has notified as denotified tribe to protect them and you know encourage them to participate in the mainstream so all these three categories not scheduled caste or scheduled tribes or general category are eligible only this category people are eligible for this scheme this is also very important so the statement came may come from all the category of students are eligible for it not all the category only these three categories are eligible and under the scheme there are two categories one is pre metric scholarship that means metric means 10th class so before 10th class the students whoever is from class 9 and 10 class 9 and 10 so those those students will be given with scholarship and also post metric that is 11th and 12th 11th and 12th not for graduation again okay only post metric intermediate or plus 1 and plus 2 only two categories 9th and 10th one category that is pre metric scholarship and post metric after 10th class 11th and 12th so they are given with scholarship to encourage to study more from this particular communities the candidates guardians or parents so who are eligible here that is that's what the statement is saying not all the students from this category is again are eligible under that the those who are poor poor means they have given the criteria that is maximum the parents income should be less than 2.5 lakh if they are crossing 2.5 lakhs that that means they are not eligible for taking this scholarship okay so class 9 and 10 students will get 75000 annually so per year they can get 75000 from government and if it is 11th and 12th the total uh, amount is 1 lakh 25000 per year for 11th and 12th students so these are also important for our exam okay so this is about the scheme right objective we have seen what is the eligibility we have seen and what communities it has been covered so that is sufficient for our exam any doubt so we'll see uh, two more articles and then we will practice some questions uh, from the articles that we have discussed okay melanistic tiger species we will see what is melanistic and all but before that let's understand the context Recently, Chief Minister of Odisha, Navin Patnaik, has announced that we are going to launch a melanistic tiger safari. Okay, so safari means you all know that tourism to see and uh, you know uh, view the tigers there. So it is tiger saf melanistic tiger safari, and it will be the first of in kind in the world, not only in India but in the whole world. This will be the first such safari for melanistic tigers. We will see what is melanistic tigers. No, don't worry. and where they are launching this simlipal tiger reserve which is located in odisha okay near to this simlipal tiger reserve they are they are planning to launch the melanistic tiger safari first of its uh, kind in the world so here you can see this is a black uh, strips usually it is a little bit yellowish color but here white and black combination much dark is there we will see why this color comes first what are melanistic tigers are also called as black tigers let's understand this melanistic so you can see there is a melanin pigment in our skin so in our skin there is a pigment if there is a higher amount of melanin in our skin it gives a darker color and if the melanin is low the color will be little bit white so by increasing with the melanin content in the skin the darkness of our skin or of our body will increase okay so melanin melanin is a pigment that consists in the skin and which can enhance or increase our color based on the amount of it right very simple so melanism is a genetic condition that means our genes whatever the genes that changes so based on that increase or decrease we will get the color okay so already we have discussed what is this and all and if there is more melanin the color of not only skin but also eyes hair and other body parts can also become little bit darker here melanistic tigers means what what are all the tigers the category of tigers which is having higher amount of melanin for those the tigers color will be little bit darker the strips will be darker when we compare to the normal tigers and they are grown faster that means in terms of size in terms of uh, height all these things the tigers will appear much larger and also they grow faster when we compare to the other tigers right so why they have chosen uh simlipal tiger reserve why don't it be in uttarakhand rajaji tiger reserve why only in odisha there is a reason approximately 37% of tigers in the simlipal national park or tiger reserve are 
pseudo melanistic that means appears to be if not all the tigers are melanistic at least 37% appears to be a melanistic tiger that's why they have him and one more reason melanistic tigers have been recorded only in simlipal tiger reserve in the whole india you cannot see anywhere only in simlipal tiger reserve you can see the melanistic uh, tiger so that's why they are establishing here okay so if someone asks you the reason why because of these two reasons or these two uh, points and what is the odisha's plan finally what they are telling we will see the details of the plan also around 200 hectares around danbad balsor national highway 18 so this is also important around up near national highway 18 they have identified 200 acres which is near to simlipal tiger reserve 15 kilometers from simlipal tiger reserve they have already collected 200 hectares there they are going to put shift the tigers or they will collect the tigers and they will shift to this particular region not all the tigers three melanistic tigers from nandan kananju so this is also in odisha again so three melanistic tigers from nandan kananju will be taken to this place and also some orphan tigers so some tigers which are melanistic and are not having proper habitat which can also sustain in the place near uh, Simlipal Tiger Reserve, those tigers also will be put here. So this is the plan that they have set. So you can understand the issue as well, right? So that is about the Melanistic Tiger uh, Reserve project that uh, Odisha government has come up with. Finally, uh, gallantry awards. So we'll see the gallantry. Okay, one more article is there. We will see gallantry awards. The president, the context is this. The president has approved giving uh, gallantry award, award for 80% among which 12 are posthumous after death right so we will see the context you don't need to worry about who won this that will not come for the exam but they will ask the statement based question what is gallantry awards or to whom it is given those things we will see right so gallantry awards has been instituted to honor the acts of bravery and sacrifice so this is not for civilians rather people who are contributed in terms of some military or bravery or some sacrifice some people may sacrifice their love I mean uh, lives uh, based on the peace to sustain for the next communities so it is for bravery and sacrifices to the officers from armed forces other lawful constituted forces and civilians as well not exclusively civilians like Padma awards it can be given to the military as well as civilians who has contributed for the national peace or sacrifice their lives so these gallantry awards are announced twice in a year very very important these are given twice in a year once for republic day and other one for independence day august 15 and january 26 unlike padma awards which are given only once these are given twice a year that is also important and categorization so gallantry awards are classified into two categories one will be wartime gallantry awards other one will be peace gallantry awards or also called as gallantry other than face of enemy. So this war time means whoever has participated in the war like Kargil war or even Indo-China clashes in 2020 COVID times. So whoever has defended the country during war time and also those people who has advocated for peace between the two countries. So there are two categories you can see here Paramvir Chakra the highest one among war time then Mahavir Chakra and Veer Chakra. So these three are comes under the war time. And Ashoka Chakra, Kirti Chakra and Shauri Chakra comes under the Peace and Gallantry Awards. So these things you need to know. So there may be statement based question also that Ashoka Chakra comes under the war, war time Gallantry Award. Something they may exchange and prepare the statement. Be aware, this, there are two categories and within these two categories of war time and peace, again there are three, three sub categories. So that is also important for our exam. So here you can see Parmir Chakra, Mahavir Chakra, Veer Chakra, three hierarchy among the face of enemy and then Ashok Chakra, Kirti Chakra and Shauri Chakra. So this we have already discussed and we need to know the history of the awards. The first three gallantry awards namely Parmir Chakra, Mahavir Chakra and Veer Chakra it was established in January 26, 1950. So first on first republic day itself it was established that's how the statements can be formed. They, they were established during the first uh, Republic Day. Yes. So they were, that was the thing. Other three gallantry awards that is Peace, Ashoka Chakra, uh, Class 1, Ashoka Chakra, Class 2, Ashoka Chakra, Class 3 
they were established in 1952 Ni not 1950 so the wartime gallantry awards were earlier 1950 they have announced but this peace awards were established in 1952 with names of class 1 class 2 class 3 after that they have renamed it as Ashok Chakra, Kirti Chakra and Shauri Chakra in 1967 they have changed the name because the class is not a good thing to give to certain people so it is a differentiation rather they will give the names right so this is the history of the awards that is sufficient no need to worry about who has won this and all that is not relevant for our exam uh, someone have asked are these helpful for engineering service exam Manu yes it is very much relevant for all the exams exclusively for UPSC any exam of UPSC as well as uh, staff selection commission exams right so engineering service exam you have current affairs in your prelims so it is very very important we are covering on daily basis so you can watch you can daily follow it and that will be helpful for you to score good in engineering service preliminary examination okay right so the final article we will see it sapinda marriage so it is a type of marriage we will see what is this but before this let's understand the context why it is there in news delhi high court reaffirmed the ban on sapinda marriages so delhi high court said that sapinda marriages are not allowed in india except in certain cases we will discuss that uh, what what in what cases and all first let's understand the what is sapinda marriage sapinda marriage means the union of two individuals of course two different genders male and female which marriages are which the two persons are closely associated how much associated there is a categorization in hindu marriage act first let's understand so in south india if you are a person from south india uh, in any of the states like andhra pradesh telangana tamil nadu generally you can see the marriages which are you know union of two individuals from cousins for example a male person can marry a female from uh, i mean his uh, what you call mother's brother's daughter right so she becomes a cousin but still they can marry in Andhra, Telangana and some part of Tamil Nadu. So cross cousin marriages we call them. These are not allowed in northern part of India. They are not traditional. So in northern part of India you can never see this historically. That's why this type of cross cousin marriages are not allowed in northern part of India. But in southern India you can see in most of the states. Right. So that's this category was kept in Hindu Marriage Act 1956 or 954. So Hindu Marriage Act was passed by the parliament way back in 1954. Under that act, they have said that in India, Sapinda marriages are not accepted. Cross cousin marriages are not accepted. Except in few situations which historically are coming or culturally they are accepted in certain regions. Only those regions are eligible to get married. So in southern part of India, Andhra, Telangana, you can see cross cousin marriages that are Sapinda marriages which are allowed. Which are allowed because it is part of a culture, uh, culture and history. But in northern part of India, Sapinda marriages are not allowed. Okay, so we have seen what is Sapinda marriage that are marriages between two individuals who are closed in a blood relation. So we will see what the closeness given by the Hindu Marriage Act. These relationships are defined under Hindu Marriage Act 1954 section 3. So they were defined under section 3. So what does Hindu Marriage Act says? Here Sapinda relationship for the purpose defines under the section 3 of act and how much relation one should not have from mother side for example if i am mar marrying a girl okay so from my mother side there should not be any marriage between three generations so i cannot marry a girl who has some relations to my mother in three generations that means her father or from her mother side in one generation grandmother grandfather side or grand grand so total three generations any of the person related to my mother i cannot marry Okay, so that is the condition given by Hindu Marriage Act and in terms of male side, okay, from father side, from my father side, the same thing which is not applicable for five generation. So in mother side only three generations, but in father side five generations I cannot marry, right. So I can, you know, recall one of the incidents when I was in civil preparation in Delhi. So there we had a sociology class, my option was sociology. So there my faculty was teaching that there are cross cousin marriages in the southern part of India. So many of my friends from northern India, they are saying, will you marry, I mean, you, you guys are marrying uh, uh, sisters, brothers and all. 
So I said it is cousins, uh, cousins marriage. So there is a certain culture. So they were shocked. So northern part of people, they don't know this Sapinda marriages, but in southern India, we follow this. Okay. So that is the mother side and father side. If a marriage is found to be violate of this, uh, there is no established custom and it was proved that it is violation of this particular provision given in the Hindu marriage act. There seems to be violation and also no established custom. So I was telling this there is an established custom in Andhra and Telangana parts of southern India but in north India there is no such custom. So it is violation. They are not going to recognize one's marriage if it is there is no custom. Right. So what Supreme, what High Court said? So High Court said that choice of partner in a marriage can be subjected to regulation. So you cannot marry anyone that you wish. There is a regulation, there is a limitation. So you have to follow those things. That's what the High Court told. Okay. Right. So this is about the uh, articles of today. Now we will see some practice questions. So I hope uh, you, uh, you know, answer actually. Let me see. Right. So the first question, consider the following statement with respect to Bharat Ratna and Padma Awards. So this is the UPSC 2021 question. Prelims question. So this is the uh, taken from UPSC exam. Let's read this. First statement, Bharat Ratna and Padma Awards are titled under Article 18 1 of Constitution of India. So they are saying that these are the awards given under the Constitution. First statement. Second statement says Padma Awards which are which were instituted in the year 1954 were suspended only once. So they are saying that they were suspended only once. Right. Then finally the number of Bharat Ratna Awards is restricted to maximum of 5 in particular year. So Bharat Ratna Awards can be given only for five people. So we have discussed the Bharat Ratna Award just yesterday, I mean day before yesterday's session where the Bharat Ratna Award was given. Also we have discussed Padma Awards today. So now you can combine the two sessions and you can answer this question of three statements. So the state, they are asking which of the statements are not correct. So try to answer this. Answer, someone has answered it as a C. So one and three statements you are saying as incorrect. They are asking incorrect. Please observe this. This is very important when you are doing the competitive exams. Right. So they are saying what, which one is incorrect, not the correct one. Let's see. First statement is incorrect because it is not recognized. It is actually banned to take any titles. So it is government initiative. There is no, uh, th uh, they, there is no such thing in the constitution. So one should be there in the answer because that is an incorrect statement. So option B is eliminated. Second one, Padma Awards which were instituted in 1954, that half of the statement is correct, but suspended only once they are saying. It was suspended in 78, 79 and then 93, 94, 95, 96, 97. So many times they have suspended. So second statement should also be there. So you have two options left. Now the number of Bharat Ratna Awards is restricted to maximum of five in particular year. Yes, that is correct. So only five at max can be given. So answer will be one and two because third statement is correct. Okay. Right. So that is about the first question. Second question, very simple. Simlipal Tiger Reserve is located in which of the following states? So this is easy to answer. I hope someone will answer this. Simlipal Tiger Reserve is located in which state? So Madhya Pradesh, Odisha, Maharashtra and Karnataka, they have given. So which state? Right. It is from Odisha. Okay. So Simulpal Tiger Reserve, we have discussed here, they are launching the first uh, world, uh, you know, safari for melanin tigers. Which of the following statements about archaeological survey of India is incorrect? So we have seen the details about the archaeological survey of India. Let's uh, read this. Yes, 2B. Yes, you are correct. 2 is B because it is in Odisha. Right? Then, next question about Archaeological Survey of India. So, we have seen the details about the Archaeological Survey of India. Let's read the statements. It is a premier organization for the archaeological research and protection of cultural heritage of nation. They are asking incorrect. Remember this. So, here it is 
promoting research in the archaeological nation so that is uh, first statement archaeological survey of india is administered under the ministry of tourism that is the second statement third statement is it is created in 1961 so they are asking what are all the statements incorrect among these three so any answer any answer for this okay take 10 seconds and try to answer after reading this they are asking the incorrect statements okay let's go ahead first statement yes it is correct it is premier organization to conduct archaeological research and protection second statement archaeological survey of india is administered under ministry of tourism no it is someone have answered it as b uh, so let's see uh, what are all the incorrect so it is administered by ministry of culture right so ministry of culture so this statement is wrong it was created in 1861 during british as not in 1961 so you are correct answer is b yes answer is b uh, fourth one smart <coughs> smart lander for investigating moon slim mission was recently launched by which of the following space organization they have given already this one and they are telling which space organization japan aerospace exploration agency national aeronautics and space administration nasa of usa then roscosmos state corporation for space russia russia space agency and chinese national space administration so what is the answer yes for esc it is helpful vikram brar for engineering service examination it is very helpful all, all the current affairs on daily basis you will see in prelims exam so very important for all the upsc exams civils or engineering services so answer is yeah you are correct someone has already answered japan aerospace agency right for last question which of the following best defines the term sapinda marriage in india so we have discussed this what is sapinda marriage try to understand this and then answer it is little bit tricky it is a marriage where a man of higher caste marry a woman of lower caste right so this is called as anuloma anuloma marriage in sociology no need to worry so here it is a marriage where a man of higher caste marries a lower caste woman it is a marriage between man and woman belonging to different castes <coughs> marriage Uh, marriages arise from being connected by having particles of same ancestors last option it is a social custom that requires a person to select a spouse from within certain groups so what is the answer for this a little bit tricky between two options so sai kumar b c no it is answer is a someone has already answered C yes C is the answer marriage arises from being connected to having particles of same ancestor that means your body is having the same uh, ancestors those those people you should not marry right so that is called as sapinda marriage and this is banned in india okay except if you are having some customs so this is about today's session a little bit lengthier one because yesterday we did not have session thanks a lot keep following keep subscribing thank you